In this video, I'm going to share with you how to pray for one hour a day. Prayer is, it's, I've, I've prayed a lot over the past 18 years, but a lot of times it's been a struggle. It's been more of a job than a joy. But I learned something years back from a book, and I can't even remember the name of the book, and it tells how to pray an hour a day. The main thing is, this is the key to praying an hour a day, and it's setting aside an hour a day. Maybe you can set aside an hour at night and say, sweetie, uh, I'm going to go to bed a little bit early because I'm going to pray for an hour. And uh, maybe you can get up in the morning early like me and say, well, I'm going to pray for an hour this morning. Now, I'm not trying to sound super spiritual because there's times that I struggle. There's times that I sleep late. This past week I've had COVID and, and it's been hard. It's hard to, to take an hour. And with our minds moving as fast as they are, sometimes it's hard to stay focused on prayer. But this is the way, and I will, uh, the, the book is called The Hour That Changes the World or The Hour That Moves the World or something like that. But the way that you pray an hour a day is you have a timer. Most of you probably have a, a, a iPhone or an Apple Watch and set it for five minutes. The first five minutes, this is actually 65 minutes of prayer rather than an hour because I have added five minutes on to my prayer time and I'll just tell you what it is. The first five minutes, I set my watch for five minutes and I rebuke all of the hindering spirits that would try to hinder me and come into my mind while I am praying. Because when you try to pray, you're going to have everything pop into your mind. You're going to remember things that you need to do. You can get up and go in that hour. And this hour should be the most important hour of your day, not the least important. So rebuke the hindering spirits, the flesh, the things that, that come about. Uh, the next thing, let me start over, okay? You're to do that, but I want to show you something right here. The paper just fell. This is a list of people's names. It's a list of things to pray for. It's a list of the names of God. It's a, a, a prayer list. And I see people's names on here that I don't think about very often, but I do when I pray and I pray for them. And not only that, I have the different things that I'm going to be talking about in this video listed on the side. So get a prayer list. Number one, first five minutes, rebuke the hindering spirits and the strongholds that will come against you in the time of prayer. And then after that five minutes goes off, mine has a little circle deal and you can hit it and another five minutes starts. And that is a time for praise and worship. Praise and worship to God. You praise Him for what He's done and you Worship Him for who He is. Spend five minutes praising and worshiping God. Thinking about Him. Thinking about how He's blessed you. Thinking about how He's helped you. And worship Him for who He is. Number three, you reset it again after five minutes. And waiting. It's your waiting. The silent surrender of your soul to God. So you just sit there and say, Lord, I, I give myself up to you. One of the verses that comes to mind that says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And that's what you do is you kneel down and you wait. You say, here you go, God. Here, here I am, God. And number three or four is confession. You confess what you've messed up. In, in life toward God. If you got any sin, you definitely want to confess that and you want to repent of it and say, God, I don't want to do it again. And with my confession, you know, I might say, well, Lord, you know, I, I haven't honored you. I haven't kept you on, on my mind. I haven't been the best servant. I haven't been the best dad. Or it could be possible that I committed a sin. I've done something that I wasn't, wasn't supposed to do and I have to apologize and confess to God. But not only that, you want to confess uh, for your children too. Say, Lord, if they're, if they're young, you need to talk to the Lord about what they may 
have uh, wrong in their life. And the next one, uh, hit, hit it again, is scripture prayer. I usually start out with our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And then there's different scriptures that are like prayers. Uh, the one last night that I shared with my family in devotions was Psalm 51, something like that. But it says, create within me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit, O Lord God. And you can write those in your prayer book, in your on your prayer list. You can write those down for five minutes. Go over some of those scriptures. And number four is watching. Watching may seem a lot like waiting, but watching is where you actually evaluate and have a mental reflection of your spiritual needs in your life. Where are you lacking spiritually? What do you need God to work on spiritually in your life? That's watching, a reflection of spiritual needs. How am I spiritually? How am I close to God? And identify that because people today, they drift further and further away from God and they don't even realize it's because they're not watching. The next one is outreach. So hit another five minutes and an outreach. Ask God what He would have you to do as an outreach. Pray for missionaries. Pray for evangelists. Pray for preachers, people that are doing outreach work. Pray for your outreach, my hospice ministry. Pray for the guy that goes and picks up kids at your church. If you don't have a guy that goes and picks up kids for children's church, pray that God would give somebody a burden. Pray that you would receive the burden to do it. The next one is intercession. That's where you intercede for someone else. That's when you pray for individuals that are on your prayer list. You pray for those people. You intercede for them. You talk to God. Whoops. You talk to... I've already got a bunch of stuff up here. You talk to God on these for these people or on these people's behalf i've got people on this, this list is old there's people on here that's dead now there's people on here that were lost and that are saved now there's people on this list that were saved and now they're lost there but i want to keep interceding for these people obviously not if they're dead because it's too late then but intercede for someone else. Pray for someone else. Number, uh, the next 25, 25 minutes left. See, we've already went through 30 minutes of prayer, 35. The next is petition. That's you asking things, asking things of God. He said, you have not because you ask not. This is your opportunity to ask God for whatever it is. Another scripture that I want to share with you right back here. I've got it written down on my altar. It's in Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. That's a powerful scripture to put in your book or on your altar. But right now, it's petition. Ask God of things. Now, the next is uh, thanksgiving. Gratitude, attitude of gratitude. God, I am grateful for my home. God, I'm grateful to be saved. I'm thankful you sent the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful for my job. I'm thankful for my ministry, my church, my past. Just go through the list. You may say the same thing every day, but you're thanking God, which you should do, but you're also reminding yourself of how blessed that you are, and it will give you a better quality of life. Thanksgiving. Next is meditation. You just, I'm not talking about some weird meditation because meditation is actually in our King James Bible. But thinking about the nature of God, thinking about who God is, reflecting on God. And that's why I have the names of God written down right here. And I also have a lot of the attributes of God written down right here. I've got El Elyon. I've got El Roi, I've got El Shaddai, I've got all of these things. I've got God is infinite, God is everlasting, God is immutable, God is unchanging, God is sovereign, God is a comforter, 
God is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. I've got all of these things down and I try to go through these things to remind myself that I'm not dealing with some ghost or some spirit or some magician, but I am dealing with Almighty God. Uh, excuse me, Almighty God who created heaven and earth. After meditation, a time of listening, a time of listening, God speak to me. We've been we've been talking a lot the last uh, the last twenty minutes or the the last fifty minutes, fifty five minutes. Sorry, I'm not good with these numbers here. We've been talking a lot. Now it's time to listen. And you mentally absorb instructions from God. What well, God, what would you have me to do? He called out to Samuel. Samuel said, Hear my Lord, your servant is present and I, I'm listening. So you need to listen to what God would have you to do for your life, for your children's life. And number five, the last one, you close out with a song. I've always got a hymn book. I've got a hymn book here. I've got a hymn book here. I've got a hymn book here. And I've got my guitar here. Right now, I play a couple of songs. All you got to do is sing or play two songs and the time is up. And you have spent an hour in prayer to God. And it energizes you in your body, in your spirit, in your soul. It makes you feel good. Because you need to spend that time with God. So I want to encourage you to write these down. And to spend an hour with God every single day. I love you all and appreciate you. Don't forget to read your Bible and pray every day. And I'll see you in the next video. God bless.